you see this map here that I want to talk about because uh, on my dad's side we come mostly from the Papaches Cree and uh, I would say that most of my life I've kind of had a, a preoccupation with you know identity belonging place those kinds of things and it comes from a uh, the displacement of the Papa Chais Cree that occurred uh, in the 1880s. So this map comes from about 1880 in Edmonton. Um, that's what it represents. <clears throat> My ancestors, the Papa Chais Cree, were indigenous to this area here. Uh, they considered this area here right around Edmonton their traditional territory. And in 1876, when Treaty 6 was signed, uh, they weren't there at Fort Pitt. They were busy doing something else, so the story goes, right? But the next year, so they heard about Treaty 6 over the, over the winter, and the next year they came to Fort Edmonton, which is where the legislative buildings are today. And they went up to the gates and, you know, basically said, we want to be part of that treaty that was signed last year. All our relatives are on there. Sign us up, basically, right? Well, the way it worked back then is that, that basically the the government officials said, you know, go ahead and choose an area where you want to live. And there weren't really a lot of restrictions. And the reserve size was given according to the size of the band. So the Papa Chase band at that time was 241 people. Now, from what I know, this area right here on this side of the river was actually where they preferred to live. But they were given advice to move further south back. So actually the reserve that was surveyed that people lived on started about Argyle Road and went south to about our Ellerslie Road, went from 50th Street to about 122nd Street. Does that track a land? Eh? Well, as you can imagine, Edmonton was just starting to grow outside the fort by then, and so there was a lot of lobbying that went on, right? We don't want that, that reserve there. It's going to be in the way of the growth of the city, which is probably true, right? It would have been. So what happened over a few years is that the land was expropriated and the, the Papa Chase were dispersed. Uh, and the, the band basically the, kind of fell apart. It was dismembered. A lot, a lot of people kind of went wherever they could, right? So my family went to just off the reserve here to a place called Cooking Lake, right? just southeast of Edmonton. That's where my dad was raised by his grandma. <clears throat> One of the things that I guess really keeps me awake at night is trying to figure out how it is that all of this could have happened and yet no one knows anything about it. No one talks about it, actually. We have a Papa Chase room in this facility here. But I've done a kind of an informal survey and no one really knows what, what that name is about, where it comes from. So how is it that this happened? Right? What are the... What are the processes that went on that enabled this sort of massive forgetting, right? And all the things that go with it. And here, you know, we're here at the university. It's on its 100th anniversary, right? And it was only 32 years after the signing of Treaty 6, the negotiation of Treaty 6, that this university was created. Right? But we know that there isn't much memory of that. 